It's a windy opening day, 1956, at Comiskey Park, Chicago. Billy Pierce warms up for the White Sox, and so does Mayor Richard J. Daley, who is just completing his first year in office. White Sox manager Marty Marion and Cleveland skipper Al Lopez are ready, along with 16,000 Chile Southsiders. Fourth inning, Bob Lemon to Sherb Lawler, who hits a ringing two-bagger into the left field corner, sending Minnie Minoso home with the first White Sox run of 1956. Next inning, Jim Busby of the Indians gets hold of a Pierce offering, and there she goes. This round tripper is one of 12 Jim will hit in 1956. That's the most he ever hit in one season. Last of the seventh, and the Sox have the bases loaded. Jim Rivera walks, forcing in Lawler from third with what proves to be the winning run. In the ninth, Billy Pierce polishes off the Indians, and his five-hit, two-to-one complete game victory earns him congratulations from Louis Aparicio, who has just finished playing in his first big league ball game. By late June 1956, Chicago has won nine straight, and today is hosting Boston in a matinee game. Last of the six, Boston leading eight to six. White Sox reliever Dixie Howell finds one he likes and blasts it into the Red Sox bullpen, scoring Aparicio ahead of him. It's Howell's first major league home run and ties the game at 8-8. Eight to eight. In the eighth inning, Don Budden smacks a double, scoring the go-ahead run for Boston. Up comes Ted Williams, and he singles in another run with his fourth hit of the day. After seven and a half, it's 11 to eight, Red Sox. Last of the night, and Fred Hatfield hits a long one down the line. It's fair, a homer for the Chicago third baseman who hit seven during the season. Unfortunately, that's all the White Sox get, and after this 11 to nine loss, the second place Sox fade and finish third in 1956. The White Sox have won 11 of their first 13 games in 1957 and in front of over 41,000 fans square off against the Yankees at Comiskey Park in a first place showdown. In the fourth, Gil McDougal draws a walk off Sox starter Jack Harshman. After Mantle walks, Yogi Berra singles over second and McDougal scores the Yankees first run. Elston Howard tees off with a drive to the deepest part of the ballpark. With Mandel and Barra both scoring to make it 3-0 Yankees. Howard is in at third with a two-run triple. Jim Landis gets two hits off pitcher Johnny Cooks, but the Yankee starter gives up only three all day. Pinch hitter Sherm Lawler, who caught the first game, thrills the fans momentarily with this long drive to left. But the Yankees win three to nothing. Minnie Minoso reaches out, and Cooks grabs the little pop fly to end the ball game. The Yanks sweep the doubleheader and temporarily knock the Sox out of first place. When the Yankees return to Chicago in June, the Sox are back in first place by five games. The largest American League crowd of the season, over 49,000, pack in to cheer Jimmy Wilson against Bobby Shantz. MVP Mickey Mantle in the first inning hits a tremendous drive into the center field seats. King-sized homers are almost expected when the Mick comes to bat. He'll hit 34 in 57 and bat 365. The Yankees lead 1-0. With Yogi Berra now on base, Hank Bauer goes with the pitch and slaps a hit through the middle. 
scoring Yogi, and the Yankees lead two to nothing. Barra is playing left field for the Yankees. In the third inning, Minnie Minoso grounds to short, but Minnie is safe at first on a force play as a run scores, making it two to one. Sherman Lawler at bat. It's a wild pitch. There go goes Minoso down to second. He's around second, coming on to third. In there. And Andy Carey is arguing. He better keep an eye on Minoso. There goes Minnie for home. But Bobby Shantz tags him out. Why is Casey Stengel upset? Umpire John Stevens had called time before Minoso broke for the plate. Stengel listens with Minnie there. That's about all he can do. In the seventh inning, Dave Philly hits a drive to left center field. Mantle is over after it. And Philly is in with a stand-up double. Louis Aparicio hits to left field. Yogi Berra bobbles, and Philly scores the final run of the game. But it's Yankees three, White Sox two. It's July, and the Yankees are now in first place. Comiskey Park is jammed for game two of a doubleheader, Dick Donovan versus Whitey Ford. In the Sox first inning, Louis Aparicio smacks a drive into deep left center. It has Mickey Mantle in hot pursuit. Little Louis easily makes it to third with a triple. First baseman Earl Torgerson lifts a sacrifice fly to Mantle. And of course, Aparicio can score after the catch. One nothing Chicago. In the Sox third, catcher Les Moss hits a run scoring single, sending Minnie Minoso home to make it three to nothing. Now it's the ninth, with Donovan and the Sox poised for a doubleheader sweep. But neither Donovan nor Jim Wilson can hold the four nothing lead. Mantle scores. And then, with the bases loaded, Pinch hitter Bill Scourin unloads a grand slam, which wins the ball game, six to four. Bauer, Harry Simpson, and Yogi Berra all there to greet the Moose on his game-winning wallet. The rebounding White Sox are only three and a half games back as the Yankees return for a late August pennant showdown. In the first inning, Jim Wilson can't get the ball over, walking Barra to load the bases for Bill Scourin. The Moose singles, scoring Bauer and Mantle. And the Yanks grab a quick 2-0 lead. In the second, Deja Vu, bases loaded, Scourin up. Bill's little infield bleeder scores Mantle, and the Yankees are now in front 5-0. Nellie Fox. In the third, Nellie lines one that scores Fred Hatfield and Louis Aparicio with two White Sox runs. Fox is in with a stand-up triple. Minnie Minoso scores Fox with a base hit, and this cuts the lead to 5-3. To the Yanks lead 6-3 in the sixth, but the bases are loaded with White Sox. Walt Dropos. Clutch single scores two, and Chicago is within a run. The Yankees win the game in the eighth. Mickey Mantle. Mickey singles with Slaughter on base. And then Yogi Berra's big three-run homer off Paula Palm wraps it up, and the Yankees win 12-6. Loyal Sox fans sit through a one-hour, 15-minute rain delay the very next night. 
Starting pitchers Don Larson and Billy Pierce both warm up before the action begins. After Larry Doby doubles in the second, Bubba Phillips singles him home, and the Sox take the lead one to nothing. An unruly fan behind the Yankee dugout is giving Casey Stengel the business. Nellie Fox tries to ignite his teammates with a perfect bunt in the fourth. But the Sox can't score. They stranded 17 runners in this game. Moose Scourn out of Weber High School just killed the White Sox in the 50s. Harry Simpson singles in Yogi Berra in the two-run Yankee sixth inning. Here's Gil McDougal. Pierce pitches to Barra in the seventh, and Yogi singles past third base. Andy Carey's bloop hit scores Yogi, and it's five to two Yankees. With Bob Turley pitching for the Yankees in the seventh, Earl Torgerson hits a long home run to right, and the Sox trail only five to four. With two outs in the ninth, Lawler walks to load the bases. Turley pitches to Sammy Esposito. Strike three. Yankees win five to four. It's 1959, and pennant-hungry White Sox fans crowd into Comiskey Park for a Mother's Day doubleheader with the Cleveland Indians. Billy Pierce and Jim Grant are the first game starters. In the second inning, Al Smith hits a windblown bloop single, and Earl Torgerson scores the first run of the game. In the third inning, Vic Powers, sacrifice fly, scores Grant from third. And the game is tied 1-1. With two on in the fourth, Russ Nixon smashes a ball down the third baseline and two runs score, making it 3-1 try. In the fifth inning, Bubba Phillips hits a fly to right. The ball falls in front of Rocky Calavito, and Al Smith scores to make it 3-2 after five. Phillips, a Sox platoon player third most of 59, gets hold of one in the eighth. It's a home run that ties the score at three to three. In the 11th inning, Minnie Minoso, now playing for Cleveland, hits to center field. And Vic Power scores the go-ahead run. In the last of the 11th, Billy Goodman singles in Earl Torgerson. And once again, the Scrappy Sox have tied the score. With the Tribe infield drawn in for a play at the plate, Bubba Phillips, one of the Sox unsung heroes of 59, gets a hit. Suitcase Simpson scores the winning run, and Billy Pierce is a 5-4 winner. The Indians returned to Chicago two weeks later, and the 40,000 fans who showed up saw visiting Martians land with ray guns and try to steal second base, all the brainchild of club owner Bill Vec. Don Ferresi starts for the Indians, Dick Donovan for the White Sox. In the fifth inning, Woody Held beats out a hard smash to deep short. On a wild pickoff attempt, Held moves on down to second. The pitcher, Ferresi, is up. But he connects for a tremendous drive to the base of the 375-foot sign. In